Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira Dent, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for being part of my Dental A Team family. I seriously love doing this podcast. I thought I was going to hate it, and I love it. I love it so much because I get to connect with you. I get to hear how this podcast is helping you and your practice be better. So if you have loved this podcast and you are willing to share, I would greatly appreciate if you'll share with your friends, if you'll leave us a review, if you'll give us five stars, anything you can do, just like you guys grow your practices, we're trying to grow this podcast to positively impact the world of dental. This is how we get to grow our Dental 18 family. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. We're your hosts, Kira Dent. And Dr. Mark Costas. Mark and I had this crazy idea that maybe we could combine a dentist and a team member's perspective because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. And Dental 18 Podcast was created. I'm a practicing dentist, a multiple practice owner, a dental performance coach, and the founder of the Dental Success Institute. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, biller, office manager, current practice owner, and international dental consultant. Mark and I don't just understand you, we are you. Our goal is to positively impact the world of dentistry by sharing our lessons learned from the road in hundreds of dental offices. Two perspectives, one mission, to help dental professionals reach their full potential. Welcome to the Dental 18 Podcast. Hello, Dental 18 listeners. This is Kira, and I wanted to do a quick episode today on... um, This is a little personal development one, so I hope you guys love these. I do. Um, I love people that I look up to that are my mentors that give me their input of what they're doing in their life. Um, I also would like you guys to know that I should be a great mentor for all of you because I am driving, podcasting, and there's a beautiful bridge. I'm (laughs) I'm in Pittsburgh, and it's so pretty, so I definitely was also snapping a picture of it all at the same time. So totally fine. I'm not. I'm alive. Don't even worry about it. Um, but no, back to mentors. I love to hear what they do, what makes them successful, what makes them tick, the things that they're doing, because I can mimic and mirror that and try it in my own life. So I decided to talk to you guys about some books that I've been reading because I was not a big book reader. Mark told me to get an Audible account and I literally was like, you are up in the night, not a chance in the world. I also was told to listen to podcasts and I was like, you're up in the night, not a chance in this world. Then I realized, holy cow, I have only scratched the surface of who I can become. Like I think about how much of our potential people actually tap into. There's some people that like just crush this world, like Mother Teresa and Gandhi and Tony Robbins and Rachel Hollis. And just like, there's some really, really inspirational people that I feel I'm like, you went so far into your potential and you just broke the bounds of everything that I could have ever imagined. Like, how do they do it? And what I found is that a lot of overachievers, a lot of people that really like, they're not just, they're not just living, but they're living. And with that, I mean, they're not just going the day to day in and out. I believe that when you're truly living, you are constantly innovating yourself. You're constantly growing to the next level and you're looking for how you can be a better version of yourself. You guys, I used to do this, but I didn't do it with intentionality. And I was like, whatever, I know how to do life and I'm just going to do it based on personal experience. So whatever happens to me, that's the kind of life I'm going to be living. Instead, I realized, holy cow, there's some really, really, really awesome mentors out there. And I'm going to do what they do because I want my life to look like their life. I want to be like them. It's just like as a child, we had role models. I don't know who your role models were. I had a lot of funny ones. I used to love to watch like ice skating, um, the figure skating. So I had a few of those role models. Definitely did not pick that up. Um, I remember my brothers, they loved like Carl Malone and John Stockton because they were awesome basketball players and they wanted to be like them. Um, mine, I, I really love my mom. I think my mom's awesome. And so she was my role model. I had some teachers at school that were my role models. I didn't even tap the potential of all these really awesome people that are in this world until realistically, I would say I really started working with Mark because Mark started having a lot of mentors and he'd talk about books he read and he would do these things. Now I have an Audible account. Whenever I'm at a conference and somebody talks about a book that they love that I admire who this person is, I download it. I literally download it right then and there. I just spent like a hundred bucks on Audible and I probably should keep that in check if I want to watch my overhead. But I'm like, no, these brilliant people are constantly consuming books. So I set a challenge two years ago that I would read one book a year or excuse me, one book a month because that pushed me because I am, I've never been a book reader. That's never been my thing. Now my goal is to do at least two books per month. 
And what I found is when I do this, I really, I'm like, gosh, guys, there's so much that I change and morph and grow into. So I want to give you guys a couple of my faves, a couple of books I'm in right now. And every so often I'll do a podcast like this because I think it's kind of fun, like a book club. When you have somebody who's reading alongside of you, you have somebody who's doing the same thing as you do. You can talk to them about different ideas, different concepts. You can get excited. You can geek out on it. You can like, like just gush in the excitement of like, oh my gosh, this totally changed my life. And you have somebody who's experiencing the same thing you are. And I really think that that's fulfillment in life. I really do. Like I think about, you know, you go up to somebody like, oh my gosh, this smells so gross. Smell it. And I'm like, why do we do that? Like it smells terrible. And I think it's because we want other people to experience life along with us because that creates joy, creates fulfillment. It creates ways for us to really connect with other people and have those deep deep connections. I know smelling something gross is funny, but you both like, like, remember how bad that smelled? You've connected with that person. So read along with me. I'm going to do a book club podcast every so often, just fill you guys in. So a couple of my faves, Rachel Hollis, you guys, that woman, Tiffany Trader was super nice. And she sent me girl, wash your face for all the ladies listening to this podcast. I will tell you two books that literally changed my life. Girl, wash your face. And uh, girl, stop apologizing. Girl, stop apologizing. was probably my favorite of the two, probably because I'm an entrepreneur and I, uh, that's, that's the life that I live. It's probably that that's probably why I do that. Um, but she, she speaks so openly. She really does talk about how, how she's this incredibly successful female and how she doesn't do it all. And the lessons that she learned and to stop apologizing for being this powerful woman that's going out and changing the world. That's something I struggle with guys. I grew up Mormon. I'm not sure if you know, but a lot of Mormon women, um, at least back in the day, they do not run businesses. They're not entrepreneurs. And if you're not having babies, you're kind of looked down upon within the culture. It's not the religion. It's the culture of the Mormonism religion. You guys, I am totally like, I felt black sheep for a long time. And I was like, why am I dimming the person that I am to make other people feel better? Like I refuse to lower my standard of excellence to um, fulfill your need for mediocrity. Like no more of that. But I wasn't always that way. I used to be scared. I'd be like, yeah, I just have this like, you know, little business. No big deal. Like this is all I'm doing. Like no big deal. It's totally fine. This is where I'm at. This is my life. Guess what? That's ridiculous. So Rachel Hollis, for all of you out there, like I loved it. You might not like it and that's okay. That is totally fine. That's definitely fine. It's not a big deal if you don't like her. But if any of you women out there that are listening want a a boost of confidence, go for it. She is unreal, incredible. And I will tell you that I have learned so much from her. So much. So girl, stop apologizing and girl, wash your face. Two incredible books. Helped me personally, professionally, um, with friends, with my family, you name it. That she really helped me a lot with that. So those are two great books. Another one, this is the one, um, and gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. I do not have, I'm driving, so I'm not going to be able to tell you the authors. Um, Mark knows them way, like he knows all of his authors way better than I do. But I can tell you the titles of the book and what it looks like because I've got that visual memory. So I'm really, really great at that. Um, Another book, and we literally live by this with our company. So if you want to know the company that I run my, like the books that I model my companies off of, this is one of them. And the book is called The Go-Giver. Um, it's a red book. It's got, it's very short. It's a fable. The Go-Giver was given to me, hmm, I want to say 10 plus years ago. And when I received that book, it was given to me when I w- worked in a, <laughs> I worked in a geology firm for a while, guys. That was a funny point in my life, but that's actually how I met my husband. So working there, um, they gave me, it's this really incredible book about leadership and about how, honestly, like, be so good people can't ignore you and give more than people ever expect to receive from you. It is a book that will literally change your life. So The Go-Giver. Um, Rachel Hollis's books, phenomenal. Um, other books that I really enjoyed, there I've got like fantasy books that I'll read. I, I sometimes go into fiction on purpose because I need to get out of business self-help mode. So, But if you were to pull up my my Audible account, right now I'm reading a really fantastic book. Um, it is called Can't Hurt Me, Master Your Mind by David Goggins. It's really fantastic. I was recommended this by Mark, by Tony Robbins. Can't hurt me so far. It's been fantastic. I also have As a Man Thinketh. Um, you guys, I've heard about this book so many times on Audible. It's 42 minutes long. That's, that's it. So it's not a super lengthy book 
at all. Um, and that book, I'm super excited. I haven't read it yet, so I can't give any feedback on it, but that is in my Audible account. So that one's coming up. Um, I'm also in a book club right now with um, with a bunch of other people, which I kind of like these. It's a mastermind group, and it's with one of my dear friends, Tarly. And that one is called um, The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. And it talks about how we we live our lives by uh, this voice that runs um, runs in the background. So I've only read the first chapter. It is literally spinning my mind as to what I think, what I've thought in the past. Like it's just, it's one of those books that really, really, really makes me think, which I, I love and hate those books. I'm not going to lie. I sometimes really, really, really enjoy them. And other times I'm like, oh, I can't even take this. It's so far outside of what I'm even thinking about. But that's another book in my Audible account right now. Um, I was just recommended by Jason Tenori, um, another great, fantastic book called um, Deep Work. So I'm, I haven't started, I haven't read this one yet. So I'm going to tell you guys, this way you guys can join me on my book club journey if you'd like. Otherwise, I'll tell you a few others that I have read that are just fantastic. So right now, Deep Work, um, this one is called Let's see. So Deep Work, that one, Jason Tenori told me is phenomenal. It's by Cal Newport. So I've got that one on Audible. And anything that Jason Tenori recommends, I have absolutely loved. So those are a few that are coming up. Um, A book that I did read that I really loved was Own the Day, Own Your Life um, by Aubrey Marcus. That one has a little bit of colorful language, but I really liked thinking about maximizing who I am as a person, personally, professionally, and just making sure I, I hone in on all of that. You guys obviously know Traction, Get a Grip on Your Business. Um, And then another great book that I love by Ryan Holiday. He's got a few really good ones. Um, The Obstacle is the Way. That was a great one of reminding me that a lot of times the the things that I can't figure out, the struggles that I have, the, you name it, like those pieces, the obstacle is the way. And when there's something that I'm pushing up against, if I go into that full steam ahead, I will be able to, you know, it, it really just reminded me, like, don't be afraid of the, the challenges in front of me. So that's a fantastic book if you guys want that one. Um, another book, I'm scrolling through this, is, gosh, this was a really, really, really good one. And I have read this one probably three or four times. And it's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. It's a very short read. And once again, this is an outsider, like, it's got a way different perspective. <laughs> so you guys will learn some of these. And like I said, I like to challenge my beliefs on life. I like to to, to really dive into it. But the four agreements, it talks about how a lot of times we just live our lives by these rules that are made up. Um, and like we have this society who's making up a toxic culture. Do I agree with everything in the book? Absolutely not. Do I think a lot of their ideas are super interesting? Absolutely. So I really, really, really love that. Um, another book that I have really enjoyed, if you guys want another fantastic book, um, some people don't like it. So I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, This one changed me. This one literally changed me. So I had a little bit of an experience in my life. Um, You guys know that I have, some of you might know, some of you might not. Um, Dental A-Team is working on uh, suicide prevention. That is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, It is very personal to me. Um, I had some dark, dark points in my life, which is why I've told you guys many times um, if that's ever been part of your world, depression's real. Um, I hid behind a lot of success. I tried to hide it for a long time. Um, there would be times I'd be driving to an office and I'd break down. And um, there were there were some. I don't I don't think I'm immune to it. I think it still exists for any one of us. Uh, but thankfully, I feel like I'm in a better spot where I can help more people at this point. And so, two books that really, really, really changed me um, that helped me. Like I, I feel very even emotional talking about them right now because I think it's so hard. Um, gosh, like the, I didn't expect this. There are so many people out there that, that are struggling. There are people out there that hurt. Um, there are people out there that, that hide behind work, that feel that everyone else around them has it put together and they, they just can't figure it out. Um, the days when I woke up and I wanted no more tomorrows. Like that's the audience right now that I think if if that applies to you or you know people like that or you're a parent, I mean, good night, my mom. If any of you are struggling with that, she could be your therapist. Like that woman went through hell and back with me many times. Um, but I had a I had a very traumatizing experience in my life. 
Um, I didn't deal with it. I just, I just suppressed it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't use any help at all with it. So, um, the book by Elizabeth Smart, my story, um, for any of you who have gone through some traumatizing things, um, I thought she was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. That book gave me a lot of hope. Um, and then she has a second book that I really loved. Uh, let me pull it up right now. So it's Elizabeth Smart. So if you guys don't know, she was a girl who was kidnapped at the age of 14 from her home in Utah. And she, I think, was gone for about seven. Oh, man. I think it was about seven months. She was gone maybe nine months. Um, and she talks about it. So it's a pretty, honestly, it was a very intense book. There's a lot in there. Um, but for those of you who are struggling in any way, shape, or form, I thought her book was a phenomenal book. And then her second book, which definitely ties to suicide prevention, um, there's just a lot of like she talks about sex trafficking. Um, she talked about a girl who committed suicide and how her family was dealing with it. But her book's called Where There's Hope by Elizabeth Smart. And um, that book, I remember reading it and I read it a couple of times because that was that was a time where I didn't feel hope, you guys. I didn't feel like, and this is me being like not Kira, like I'm not polished right now. I'm not I'm just a real person, you guys, on this mic. I'm sitting in a parking lot. And when I read that book, you guys, my life, I felt like there was hope. There were so many chapters in that book that that reminded me like, okay, it's okay to to move to the next day. Um, she had so many, she interviews a bunch of different people who have had like really big struggles and talks about how when there's hope, you you can move on. You can you can find ways. You can find solutions. And I remember talking to uh, some good friends when I was struggling. And I remember saying, "When hope is lost, when hope is gone, that's I believe when the flicker of light goes out. If there's a glimmer of hope. If there's anything you can hold on to, I believe you can get through anything. I really truly believe that with all of my heart. But when that hope is gone, like that that candle is just blown out of hope." Like you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like there's no way to fix the practice. You feel like there's no way to fix your family relationships. When you feel like you've gone so far away from the path you meant to be on. Gosh, guys, like all those things just bring up so many memories for me. I didn't think I could fix my marriage. I didn't think I could fix my family relations. I didn't think I could fix me. Um, I had so much guilt and so much heartache and so much sorrow. I was so sad. I remember my dad said, you're going to be one sad little girl, Kira, if you don't change your life. And I did not listen to him. And I was one sad little girl. And there are still days that it haunts me. Like I have traumatizing nightmares sometimes. But this book was unreal. So if any of you have that spoke to you, like I gave you guys a whole slew of books today of the book club. Um, I'm more than happy I read them. They've touched me in some way. That's why I brought them up. So there's Rachel Hollis, um, her books, Girl, Wash Your Face, Stop Apologizing, The Go-Giver, um, Ryan Holiday with uh, The Obstacles Away and Ego is the Enemy. Phenomenal books are so good. I'm reading... Um, it Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Um, the the other, gosh, what was the other one that I mentioned that I'm going to be, I can't even wait. Um, another one for guys, if any guys are listening to this, which I know there are guys. So um, I, I've started it. I haven't finished it, but it's called No More Mr. Nice Guy um, by Robert Glover. I was recommended this by two guys at my last mastermind. They say it's also fantastic for women. Um, but it really talks about how like being the nice guy and trying to appease all the people around you really doesn't get you where you want to go. And I've really, really, really enjoyed that book as well. Um, the Deep Work by Cal Newport, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, As a Man Thinketh, um, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, and then, um, of course, Own the Day, Own Your Life by Aubrey Marcus, fantastic one. And then the last two, oh, excuse me, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And then um, also, I really loved My Story and When There's Hope by Elizabeth Smart. So guys, that's like a whole gamut. You guys can see like there's a little snippet into my world. Um, and also, I, I definitely read some like teen romances in there as well. So I really, I really did love the Twilight series. So shout out to that. And then um, I just finished reading a book called The Elementals by Michelle Maddow. That was just a fun, like totally teen romance. Like, oh my gosh, they're like Zeus and Hera. And if that doesn't appeal to you at all, fine, don't read it. But if you just want like a fun little fantasy book, that one had like five books in it. I totally was like geeking out, putting my headphones in. So Jason went, no, I was listening to it. Um, but that one was really fun for me too. So as you can see, and this is what I really wanted to dive into is as human beings, we're not just work. We're not just personal development. We're not just 
uh, food or working out or personal relationships. Like that is the whole composite of a human being. That's what makes us who we are. And so as you can see in that book list I just gave you, there's some on leadership, there's some on business, there's some on um, like on psychology, there's some on just fun, fun life. There's some on like really hard struggles that I went through. Um, There's some that are just like really good guiding principles that you should have in life like as a man thinketh. Um, but, but all these things, if you guys want to read, so right now my current library is No More Mr. Nice Guy, uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, and As a Man Thinketh. Those are the three that I'm rotating through. Sometimes I get real bored with a book, so I have to switch it over. So those are the three that I'm currently reading right now. All the others I've read, um, except for the deep work, that one is up next. I can't do more than three books at a time because then I just forget what I was learning. So um, I always listen to Audible 2.5 times the speed. I That keeps me engaged because otherwise I fall asleep. So those are just my little tips and tricks. But guys, I think it's fun if you can, if you can watch mentors, you can learn, you can evolve yourself in whatever it is, personal, professional, business, leadership, um, going through struggles and, and finding hope, whatever it is. I challenge you guys, pick pick one of those books or pick one of your own, whatever you want. Um, but really, truly, and as you can see, I mean, I'm even reading like No More Mr. Nice Guy. Like I want to figure out what guys go through. Guys, like read, girl, stop apologizing. Like figure out their struggles. Sounds so silly to read something that's not directed to us. But I really think that that gives me more empathy, gives me more understanding, and it allows me a, a greater insight to people that I'm around. So there's your guys' book club podcast for today. Um, I hope you guys find something in there. Let me know. Send me over some of your favorite books, things that have changed your life in whatever aspect it was. I would absolutely love to book club it up with you guys. Um, I'm happy to even create a Dental 18 book club. I can put up there some of my favorite books. We can add to it because let's share, let's share best practices and really elevate ourselves. So as always, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. Please, please, please go leave us a review. I seriously, guys, like it, may, it makes me all day when I go on to the the podcast and I look and I see your guys' reviews. I feel like um, in a in a small way I'm connected more so to the audience. And I really, I really do read all of them. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving me feedback. Um, become a pen pal. Send me over your ideas of what you want chatted about on the podcast. Share with your friends, share with your teams, um, and really, really help make somebody else join and elevate to a higher level. As always, thank you for listening and I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time. Oh,